Right, we all need to start talking. Look at this. Elon Musk Twitter followers, the growth, 25 mil in 2018, up to 75 million. It's actually more than that, it's like 78 million now. Okay. Which is quite yeah. interesting. He has a huge impact <laughs> on the world. But look at this uh, graphic above. That's what, two thirds of his tweet. Is it worth a trillion dollars? Wouldn't be, yeah. So it's worth a trillion dollars. Yeah. And um, and he tweets about it a lot to 70 million people. So look, he's been going crazy, his, his, his tweets about the war. And what with Ukraine? Mm hmm. Well, he offered to, well, he offered to, and he has given a Starlight satellite, um, yeah, satellite coverage to the people of Ukraine. Ukraine, yeah, yeah, and um, it's it's working. In fact, the other day, it was Starlink was the most downloaded app in the country. Country, yeah, that's trying to be that as well. He's kind of treading on uh, Putin's well, toes a little bit. Yeah, it's a dangerous game to play. Elon's a, a brave man. He's never afraid to not speak his mind. He's not like Jeff Bezos. No, right? tr trying to play with he's safe with his money and something like that. He's so safe with it. Yeah. Although I he's really he's safe with it. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from what his ex to 38, 38 <laughs> Billy. Yeah. That was that's, that, that's still smart though. He got rid of her early when, he, when his network was really blessed. Well, I mean, losing 38 billion, I think that's going to hurt anyone, no? Yeah, but still, now, he's, now he's happy that he got uh, separated from her before. It would have been like 80 billion now. Now, probably. yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what makes him happy. 70 billion? People, like, we don't even know how much these billions are, do we? Not many people understand money. Myself, and like, I kind of understand it, but you have to follow the money to see how the world works. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to follow the cycle. From, be, from where it's generated to uh, rich people who earn it, try to reinvest and then earn it back again while the poor people remain poor on the corner. It's just rich, rich people circulating, you know, back and forth, back and forth between themselves. Do you think it should change? Probably. If it changes, uh, see, what we are usually used to is, we are usually used to seeing what these rich people or these rich families and their rich are bringing tries to handle money in a particular way. They invest in stocks, real estate or something Pensions, like that. Pensions, yeah. thousands. What if the poor people try to become rich? They try to do something different. We don't know what they'll do when they have money as well. They might try to invest in something different. Oh, go casino. <laughs> yeah, or, or buy diamonds like most of the rich American rappers. So, yeah, the problem with buying the diamonds, right? Is that you, you? Once they're cut, they're cut. Yeah. You can't melt them down again. Whereas gold, whatever shape that gold jewelry is, it's pure gold. You just melt it back down. Yeah. It turns into like melted chocolate type material. Yeah. And then you can uh, you can make it so it holds its value. So you make it yeah. something completely. Different. Resale value of cut diamonds after they are made. It's, a, it's, a, it's not that you want. To you don't get any returns on it. They do look good though. That's interesting. But back to what you're saying about the rich and the poor. Yeah. I feel like the rich can still be rich, but the poor don't have to be poor. I'm not saying take all of their money, but I feel like more kind of internal structural changes in society. Like I always say, a lot of famous people like Elon famously, he, he grew up reading books, right? He'd read like two in a day. He read his entire library by the age of like 15. Because I read that, the, the, the biography about him. And yeah. Warren Buffett did a similar thing. Barack Obama used to be known for like consuming books. But look at some of the most successful people in the world. Go to like Cambridge, Oxford, Yale, Stanford. There's bound to be some good Asian ones I can't think of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, HEC. Yeah. But and what, do, what do all those institutions have in common? They have some of the best libraries in the world. Libraries. It's like that information and the knowledge, the ability to obtain knowledge, just to ed educate yourself, yeah. whether it's structured or unstructured. That's true. So I feel like with the government spending and stuff, like they wasted eight billion pound on the COVID PPE that just ran out at the, like its expiry date and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know if it was PPE or vaccines or not, but it was something else. Basically, 
think if with that eight billion they were just managing inventory better because that has an inventory problem, right? Yeah. With that eight billion, they're managing inventory better, and then they save that half of it. So you've got four billion pounds, and you just put a billion pound library in the city centre of four different cities. Yeah. Think how much that would help the local community. People that can't study in the house, poor kids who can't study in the house to in a real cramped house and like this and that and that. They, they can just have an amazing, one of the best libraries in the world on their doorstep and tell me you ain't going to want to read more books. Yeah. You know what I mean? I remember you showing me uh, the library you used to go and visit. Yeah. It's a real nice yeah. Bristol, yeah. It's nice. It's nice. It's, library. Library. it's real nice. Yeah. And the, uh, the, the, the Wills Library in Bristol as well. You know that, that, that steep hill and there's the tall tower building? Yeah, in there. Have you seen that building? Let me show you on this, sir. Talking about rich people, apparently, uh, 10 of the richest men in the world doubled their global wealth during the pandemic. 10? Doubled. Yeah, 10 of the rich men of the entire yeah, that's world. That's what the world's like, yeah. it looks like. That's a trillion pounds. A trillion pounds. Wow. I was reading somewhere the other day that the, um, the Saudi royal family yeah. could be worth a trillion pound, 1.2 trillion. Easy. They don't give out the information that easily, do they? No, they don't. Well, it's because the oil reserves, and it's private companies, state yeah. company, so they don't have to tell them what, how much oil they have. Yeah. We just have to kind of trust them, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Which is fine, because of business. It's like the diamonds with the De Beers. Yeah. yeah that whole Isn't the gold as well? No one really knows how much gold is left. Can you imagine that? Is that like your family's quite wealthy. You're not you're not royal, but your family's wealthy. And you own loads of land, like somewhere out in Texas or and um there's really like people like ten miles down the road. Yeah. They found oil. There's an oil mine just set up. So you test it. Your buddy brings up, hey, I've got the machine I can test it, check for <laughs> oil. He comes in, plugs, sets the machine up, yeah. you find oil. And then, then no one how I'd... much you have. <laughs> you just have a huge reserve yeah. worth like five, six billion dollars. That's happened to some people. Yeah. No one you become a billionaire. Over that billionaire. Yeah. Well there's a uh, Rockefeller. You know about Rockefeller? Yeah. He um he was one of the original oil tycoons. Yeah. And how much do they think he was worth? I thought they thought he was worth like Stupid, like one of the richest men ever. Net worth today, money. Whoa. As of 2019, it would have been worth $400 billion. Yeah. American oil magnate, uh, John Rockefeller, richest person in American history. Wow. At what percentage of uh, world's oil do you think he had? Less than 10, I think. Controlling 90% of the oil of the United States is P. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. But now we're talking about the entire world. No, that's just the United States. Oh, okay. yeah. Here we go. It's just saying United States. But at the time, the United States was the biggest. Biggest country in the world. Though. Yeah. By miles. Who do you think has. The oil reserves today. The most. I'll try to find them. Can't be sure though. I'm gonna try to find them in the breakdown. Yeah. Which country produces the most oil in the world? The United States. The United States. I wasn't expecting that. Twenty percent. Top producers and consumers, so I think uh, the United States could be among the consumers though. Do you know what I like to do go on images? I find like a pie chart type thing. That was big. Our country. <clears throat> Iraq. OPEC. Oh my word. OPEC has everything. Yeah. Look how much OPEC controls. You, <laughs> you know the structure of OPEC through those com big companies colluding? Colluding, yeah. That would be like illegal in the UK yeah. uh, company legislation. Yeah. However, like, on like the world stage, it's not. Yeah. You know, Boris Johnson's there at the minute in Saudi Arabia. Okay. He's chatting, because basically, 
We need more oil right now. Yeah. Because we need a month. Apparently they have quite a good relationship though. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. I'm trying to read uh, Venezuela has almost 18% of the entire world share. Venezuela? Yeah. By oil reserves. Second is the 16.2% in Saudi Arabia. This data is from 2016 though, but still. Mm. It's probably not that off. <coughs> nah. What's your favourite type of renewable energy? Favourite type of renewable energy? I think the solar energy. Yeah. I like solar. Yeah, I like solar. The, the other day when I, when I was uh, a kid in my high school, when they said like you can create energy from the sun's radiation from the heat, I thought why can't we cover all of the deserts with solar panels to solve electricity problems for the entire world? And then, it, and then I found a, it's not like a documentary, but it's like a question and an answer that the YouTube channel does. So he clearly explained what happens if you cover most of the entire desert, like the Sahara Desert or the Arabian produce electricity with solar panels. It only really change the entire ecosystem of the entire desert. Yeah. The entire, yeah, it would change yeah. the whole ecosystem. Yeah. The entire ecosystem, yeah. But it's, it's not good for the planet, that's what he says. It's not good for the planet. Yeah, in the long run, yeah, not know, many animals will go ex extinct. Yeah. yeah. Many animals will go extinct, but how many animals live in the desert? It's not the easiest place to live. Yeah. I kind of find it weird how there's animals. But still, the yeah. point is though, what, what you were trying to say in this video was if you try covering the anti deserts with solar panels, it will stop the heat from going to the soil. So the soil starts to become moist when it rains. So it starts growing plants and all, it will try to become a normal forest. In the long run, though, it could be like 100, and 100, 100 million years. No, not, not, not 100 million years, but 100,000 years. Yeah. Did you know a lot of the Sahara didn't used to be desert like five or six thousand years ago? Yes, yeah, so, okay. Nah, I didn't know this. That's not that long. Yeah. In terms of the long. desert heating up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that um, with the, yeah, photos thing, I think wind farms are alright. They are ugly though. Like, uh, yeah. Solar panels are better than wind farms aesthetically. Yeah. We don't want to be driving like that. I was trying to, I think in one, when I was uh, in, on the YouTube, I've seen one of the suggestions that said, why are wind turbines? They can't be recycled, it seems. Yeah. So it's like, it's like a very, really good source of energy generation. But what happens after the machinery or the product as such is damaged, the wind turbines are damaged. It says they can't be recycled. So it's like one of the most effect causing renewable energy source. With the batteries, you can at least do something with the chemicals and go inside the battery after 40 or 50 years. One of the plus uh, I almost see a little ma management right now that I'm interested in starting some company with um, the batteries. We do have like sustainability, it makes it like a closed loop, a circular economy. When it doesn't just get thrown into waste, you yeah. reuse it. And I feel like we can spend way more time learning how to reuse these things. Yeah. But reusing the batteries, because batteries are nasty. When you throw batteries out, you don't want old battery acid to, to touch your skin. No, no, you don't. <laughs> or some like t baby turtles. <laughs> <laughs> you, want it, yeah. you want it to avoid that entirely. You know the thing with the uh, wind farm? Yeah. With 40% uh, of the cost of them is the cabling inside. Yeah. It's really high. So I was thinking, like, you know how the wind energy is just going to boom as, as the world switches to renewables. Yeah. Surely if you bought stocks in one of the companies that did the uh, cables for the wind farm. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I remember you telling me about this. In the future, when uh, the demand for sustainable energy gets higher, that's when you probably want to buy wind turbine companies. Why don't you just, well, if you had a lot of money, just buy now, sit and hold for 10, 15 10, years. 10, 15 years. Imagine yeah. if you had like 100 grand in there, and it times by 10. 
Even tame grapes aren't to like, terribly nice. Yeah. Mm. They're trying to find the share prices. All All stead share prices down recently. Okay. Because the war, the war just kind of crashed a lot of the stocks. Okay. So six months. Yeah, six months. At one point, it was in December. It was eight forty, but it crashed. It crashed down to six eighty. It didn't crash loads. We got a year. At one point, it was trading up over a thousand. Okay. See, the stocks traded at one thousand three hundred before. It's at eight hundred now. Eight hundred pounds. Uh, eight hundred and eighteen pennies. So the actual stock, because the UK stock, it's not like it's a penny. I think I'm not really sure. Oh, it's eleven p. I don't know to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that is. I I I don't know which car country the stock is. The stock charts on. BKK to GBP is like one. Uh, BKK is like eleven p. So it's an eight hundred. So that will be approximately. Yeah, okay. You know, if, 90 pounds. if I was, if I wasn't sat here with you right now, no offence, but if I sat here with Elon Musk and we started talking about this and he was like, yeah, I think it's a great stock, I think it's got loads of promise, there'll probably be like, if that man gets put on the internet, there'll probably be like hundreds of millions of dollars like pour into it. Yeah, easy, easy. From all, his night, Twitter, all night, all From his Twitter. All night. He yeah. has, probably not from, if he posted that video on his Twitter. Like he, the way he can make, I swear he was single-handedly responsible for controlling Bitcoin at one point. Yeah. Do you remember when he would tweet something and it would just jump, and then if you'd say not, the like ridiculous the amount of influence that man has, seventy-seven million followers. He yeah. is, I think he's the most influential person on Twitter. Easy. Apart, yeah. apart from Tim Dillon. <laughs> yeah, you remember the company. That when Facebook was trying to change its privacy policy and something like that, Elon Musk just tweeted, you can use this as a social media yeah, app. Sing- signal. Signal. Most of the people didn't even check the company's name and tried to invest all of their money the in the wrong company. company. I saw that. Yeah. It went up low. Yeah. Somewhere. Imagine having that much of power in the stock market on mm-hmm. the entire world. Unbelievable influence. Because the thing is that like, you go on one of these... Uh, politicians twitter pages and they're only getting like i don't know like three four thousand likes like so, <laughs> some of the people that are controlling some of the biggest countries in the world maybe not the pm yeah. but but like the cabinet around of his team that they work with they get no social media attention at all yeah yeah they have huge power and influence yeah like think it's like some of the celebrities get enormous yeah like you know enormous if he's saying like F one side or the other of the political party, or if he's not like, yeah, he can have some huge influence on yeah. people. I'm trying to find, uh, looking at the stats for the wrong company. After Elon Musk has tweeted, the uh, the wrong company share price has increased by four hundred and thirty eight percent overnight. People well, just went mad. Four hundred percent. Four hundred and thirty eight. It's almost four hundred and fifty. Yeah, imagine you're some. Like retired accountant, <laughs> just had some money at home. That's so you went to bed, you woke up, your money's been true. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. What was the uh, remember? I was on the bus, but like three, four months ago, I was yeah. on the bus with you, and there was that cryptocurrency investment into Shiba. And they said, like, it could be the greatest trade of all time. Do you remember? And it went from like tiny to a billion. Yeah, the, the dog, uh, Bitcoin, you're talking to, yeah. Oh, here we go. Mystery that the Shiba coin that Elon Musk endured, endorsed, yeah. endured, endorsed, sorry. The mystery Shiba Inu coin trader, he, okay, this guy invested £5,800 and turned it into £4 billion. £4 billion. Pounds. I know. Do you know <laughs> who he is? Imagine that. You invest five grand. I mean, he owes at least like a billion to Elon. Yeah. That's what we're saying. Give Elon more money. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get in touch with Elon if you want your company share price to rise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get him to do anything on Twitter regarding your company, and then so on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then you get into the right game. But what if he's like, don't use a kills? Take away, shop away. You have. Yeah. yeah, we are fucked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fucked. But, yeah, you are a little bit, you're a little bit screwed. But I think, um, 
Yeah, I don't know which one so far. <laughs> talking about because you may mostly talk about Elon Musk. Mm. I think uh, why do you think Elon Musk is supporting Ukraine all of a sudden? Oh, you want to go there? Yeah. You want to yeah. go there? Do you? <laughs> okay, we can go yeah. there. Yeah. Well, basically, what I think is Ukraine has I don't know I, I don't know anything about Ukraine, but it has got some something that is useful to Elon Musk in the long run. Could be like minerals or some, okay. something. Do yeah. You know, do you know, remember this? Look, look what I found. Ukrainian researchers have speculated that the country's eastern region holds close to 500,000 tons of lithium oxide, a source of lithium which is critical to the production of the batteries of power electric vehicles. Yeah. Now, now, now. <laughs> we can't jump to conclusions here because he probably is just doing it out of the bottom, like out of just good kindness in his heart. Yeah. Given his stomach because the country's at war and he wants to help these people. But you never know, he's Elon Musk. But he is like one of the most smartest persons living on this planet. Like he is, unbelievable. Yeah. You don't know what's going on his, in his head. Like no, no. Yeah. But I, but I mean, the fact that five hundred thousand tons of the stuff that makes his electric car batteries probably doesn't harm the yeah. fact that it's there. Because this 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 article from the uh, New York Times was saying how uh, lithium's wealth was drawing global attention before the war. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, that's, that's remember a tweet I said, uh, how, uh, like, civilization, we've, we've fought over resources for centuries, yeah. and we still do now. Countries go to war for oil, whether they say that's the, the main reason or not. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Yeah. Or minerals. They know the way the world's going. But I don't think that's the reason why it happened anyway. But yeah. Who knows? I think I think that's that's uh, one of the reasons, because right now Elon Musk buys uh, lithium ion from a Chinese company, so I'm trying to find out how what's the what's the reason of lithium ion lithium in China. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, if China is uh, the reserves of lithium in China are going down, Ukraine still has like five hundred thousand tons of lithium available to them. Mm. Yeah. I don't know how what that portion of the world is, but it's, it's noticeable for all the countries to be interested. We can say that when all the countries are interested, so it must be noticeable. Mm. But how about Afghanistan? Sitting on Afghanistan is sitting on one point seven trillion dollars of minerals. Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why the Taliban took over them. Well, maybe. That's, I think that's why a lot of countries are fighting over that. Yeah. The point is though, I think I've seen it on Facebook or Instagram, there's a particular crowd that is living in Afghanistan that say the Taliban's ruling or the rules that they follow with the, try to form with the government and their restrictions or how they try to proceed with the country is a lot more better than the actual government ones. Mm -hmm. They want the Taliban to, to stay in the, as a, form as a government. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Yeah. The, the problem with um, the problem with the way we sometimes see it in the news, they don't. I don't think they put enough emphasis on the fact that it's a very tribal country. Yeah. Afghanistan is one of the most tribal countries in the world. Yeah. And the power structures that the tribes operate in, yeah. it has a lot of power and influence in the country. Like, if you're part of one of the most powerful tribes in that country, yeah, you're probably, you know, on par with, with, with a, you have influence on politics and things like that, you know what I mean? So I think the way when these wars get explained to us sometimes, they don't often talk about that, the tribe yeah. level, yeah. Or, even the, or even the political situation of the country, they don't, they don't yeah. describe that. So, yeah. That's quite mm -hmm. interesting, to be fair. I think Taliban has uh, something regarding to the women's rights. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. I think they tried to, not very sure, but I think they did try to improve the women's rights. Yeah, regarding the jobs or regarding the... Nah, I, I, yeah, now I remember. There's, there's a few uh, group of women 
to try to get in contact with Taliban to try to get a proportionate of members in the, in the government being women. I think even the Taliban accepted the proposal, which the previous government did. Mm. Yeah. That's a, that's a start. What do you think of Rashid Khan? You love him. <laughs> he's one of the Hyderabad yeah. boys, isn't he? Yeah. He's one of your homeboys, the Afghanistan cricket player. I think the fact that a few Afghanistan players are some of the best players in the world now. Yeah. Ten years ago, Afghanistan cricket was nowhere. nowhere. In 2012, they had a terrible team. And I watched this documentary on them. Yeah. And it was pretty cool watching the growth. They, they were facing, have you ever seen a bowling machine with like 90 mile an hour, 80 mile an hour nah. balls come out nah. with cricket? No? Nah. Like, it is scary. Like, a guy, Philip Hughes, like, five, six years ago in the international scene, he died. He yeah. was a professional player. He died when he got hit in the head by the ball. It'll, oh, like, it'll break your ribs. Yeah, if you yeah. get hit by it, it'll break your ribs at that speed. And, yeah, they were just, just joking around, batting, like, swinging this. They're not scared of it at all. Like, they're brave, yeah. brave people. I think they're quite strong people as well. Yeah. How much of... Do you think British people are strong people? Could be. Yeah. They're quite tall. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, kind of too. Kind of hard. Yeah, but I think I don't think I've done it such a thing. Ah. Yeah, yeah, and that's so sticking with the uh, cricket. Yeah. In Hyderabad, see Rashid Khan. If he's in Hyderabad, can he go anywhere without being mobbed? Anywhere. No, without being mobbed. Mobbed with fans. Nah. Nah. <laughs> how big? A, if if like he was at a restaurant, how many people do you think would gather if they saw him moving? Easily a thousand. Easily, easy, a thousand. easily a thousand. Easily. Easy, easy. What usually happens with the begins like uh, with the people sitting in the restaurant, they call some of their mates, like, you know, Rashid Khan in this restaurant, let's meet him, so you can just come to meet them. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I li- I like the, the fandom. Yeah. I love someone. People yeah. the, the with the IPL, most of the idiots. They love so many of the international cricketers. Like, yeah. Yeah, I love it though. I love how passionate they are. Yeah, they want us. Is like he feels his body is like his second home. Like, yeah, they just, won't be getting that. Like, they just love it, it. It's a it's a level of love they're not getting in their home cities. In their home cities, yeah. English cricket walk <laughs> down here, <laughs> screaming, telling everyone he's a professional player for England. No one, like a few people, might go up to him. Yeah, but not a lot. Like yeah. maybe three or four. Because I read an article about Sachin Tendulkar, he did an interview for this cricket magazine, because I was just about to get you a monthly cricket magazine. Yeah. And um, he was saying in India, he has 10 bodyguards everywhere he goes. In England, he doesn't need any. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true, though. The point being, it is, I think it's with the us, Indians. Loving cricket so much that we just love all of our cricket players, right? But you guys do go like that for Bollywood stars as well. Yeah, we love our movies as well. So, mm. yeah. but there is something if you love cricket, cricket's just it's different, isn't it? Cricket is different. Yeah, it's cricket a beautiful sport. Yeah, a lot of people hate it without actually understanding the game. Yeah, that's true. Though not many Americans would get that. Would they? With, with us uh, Indians as well, when you have a match, let's say when India is playing, like you say, and they feed in the international ball, we, we do, we pray to God so India wins, like, that's how we love our cricket and we love our cricket team. Yeah. Mm. That's, uh, do you think a lot of the players are religious as well? Yeah, yeah, most of the players. I, I read say. this uh, sports psychology book talking about how how a lot of the top sportsmen they just have this ultimate self-belief in the confidence because when you get to that elite level so much of it's a mental game yeah okay and he was using the example of this olympic british olympic uh long jumper i can't remember his name basically he was super religious and he was saying god was telling him he was going to win and the guy was like god on your side in the competitive environment like how are you going to you're not oh. going to be lacking confidence. Oh, okay. Yeah. You feel like you've been chosen. Yeah. And this is your your destiny. Yeah. He, you know, you, you just feel empowered because you're not being empowered by yourself. You're being empowered by something bigger than yourself. Some external power. Some yeah. external power giving you energy yeah. of life. 
When you have something like that, you don't fear to anything. Yeah. You're not scared of anything, anything. Even the toughest competitor, you're not scared. Because you know you have something extra. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you ask, but what if he has it as well? The point being, it is, let's say I, I'm a person who is, uh, uh, let's say God talking to me or the external power talking to me. And you're on the other side, you're on the same racetrack and the external power or the God is talking to you as well. The point being is that I don't know that you're, uh, even God is talking to you as well. So I think, Psychologically, I think it's just me. So, in action, I might actually perform better because I'm not scared of you. Because I know there's an external power along with me. I'm just going to win it. I have to give my best. So you, you on the other side, think think this as well, and you give your best. And when both people are giving their best, it's when the magical sporting moments happen. Yeah. Have you been that, to that's when, that's when they create history. Yeah. And it's interesting how some of the same players over and over again. Yeah. I think that's what makes certain players world class. Think of Emma Stoney. Yeah. He, like, I've never seen a cricket player that is so calm under pressure. And I watch all the interviews of like people that have played with him or against him, like uh, Michael Clark or like Glenn Maxwell or someone like that, yeah. or Flintoff, and they're all saying how Donny just has this, the calm, his presence on the field, he's always like has such a clear mind yeah, yeah. that no other captain really has been able to do in recent times. Think of when he used to bat right, in yeah. run chases, think how calm he'd be. Yeah. He's, a he's the most, yeah, that's why we call him Captain Cool. Yeah, he, he is not, probably not. It sounds ridiculous, oh, they're just talking about a cricketer, but when you're captain of India, how many people do you think want you to win? A billion? A billion, easy, easy. Yeah. I don't think many other people, like, it's a serious international levels of yeah. not many other, obviously one football team gets the World Cup final maybe, but not many people in sport will have that many people wanting them to, to win. A yeah. massive, insane amount. A lot of people can't cope with that pressure. Yeah, that's true. That's huge pressure. Huge. That's a huge. billion, like what even is a billion people? Yeah. We don't, we can't even picture that. No. Which is kind of crazy when you think how we managed to control all that many people. Yeah. But yeah, Donny's, he's a legend. He's a legend. He is a legend. Yeah. Mm. I'm surprised he won't get into politics. You said there's a real difference between what the cricketers is. and the politicians. He wants to get into the Indian Army. Mm -hmm. He wants to, yeah. I remember he, he always used to wear those uh, camouflage gloves. Gloves, yeah. In the ODIs and stuff, kind of paying tribute, paying homage. Yeah. Doesn't he have an Indian military title now, though? I think so. The, uh... Who is the, uh... Prime Minister of Pakistan? The Prime Minister of Pakistan... Imran Khan. Imran Khan. He used to be an ex-fast bowler for Pakistan. Yeah. An international team. Yeah. So he's an international sports player and he went to be Prime Minister of the country. And you know, he went to Oxford as well. Okay. Imagine studying at Oxford whilst playing for Pakistan. Yeah. Seriously talented guy. I mean, he does not waste time. Yeah. Probably sending out like that. Mm -hmm. That's um, true. That's true. What was yeah. Tony's upbringing? Was he like poor? I mean, yeah, he was poor, yeah. He was poor. He was forced to get into it good competitive exam yeah but he was fucking smart though in his studies as well he was yeah, yeah he was mad smart in his studies I'm yeah surprised. have you not watched the documentary the, the movie. yeah no have you not is it not a movie it's, it's, a, it's a movie yeah no, no, no i watched the trailer though the trailer got i think 80 million views on youtube yeah no film trailer gets 80 mm -hmm. million yeah other than maybe Fast and Furious, yeah. which is absolute trash. Do you watch Fast and Furious? Nah, I don't watch. It's the special effects of it these days are terrible. Yeah. It's an 80 million mad. Well, we're half an hour, 34 minutes in. How could you stop? Yeah, we can. You yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Is this 